What are sequences? A sequence is a list of numbers. For example, here's a sequence. It's just a sequence that goes one, one, two, three, five, eight. And I'll write dot, dot, dot to remind you that the sequence goes on forever. It's an unending list of numbers. Each of these numbers in the list is referred to as a term in the sequence. I want some notation so I can refer to specific numbers in the list. Well, I'll write a sub one for the first term in my sequence, a sub two for the next term, a sub three for the next term, a sub four for the next term, a sub five for the next term, a sub six for the next term, and so on. So in this particular example, I could say that the sixth term in my sequence is eight, or the third term in my sequence is two. If I want to talk about the sequence as a whole, I'll perhaps just write down a sub n, maybe in parentheses, and I'll use this notation to talk about the entire sequence. But by plugging in different values for n, I can then speak of specific terms in the sequence. This means that a sequence really amounts to some assignment from these indices, the subscripts, to other real numbers. And a gadget that assigns numbers to other numbers, it's a function. So yeah, the sequence a sub n is secretly a function f of n because both of these gadgets are just ways of assigning real numbers to other numbers. In this case, the sequence assigns a real number to these n's, to one, two, three, and so on. So it's worth pointing out then that what's really the domain of this function that's playing the role of the sequence? Well, the domain of f should just be whole numbers. I don't want to talk about the five-thirds term of the sequence, right? It doesn't really make sense, usually, to talk about a sub five-thirds or a sub pi. But it does make sense to talk about a sub three and a sub 100. So the domain of my function, the thing that I'm allowed to plug in for n, should really just be whole numbers. And I'll usually denote that with this fancy looking n. I can take a look at a sequence numerically. I can just take a look at the terms and see what their approximate values are. Besides thinking numerically, I could also think about a sequence geometrically. For example, here's a number line. Let's say here's zero, here's one, here's two, here's three, and it would keep on going, say. And I could try to plot the terms of my sequence on this number line. You could imagine some sequence where the first term is here between zero and one, the second term is between one and two, maybe the third term is here between one and the second term. Maybe the fourth term is over here between a sub one and one. Maybe the fifth term is over here, just a little bit less than three. You could plot the terms in your sequence to try to get some idea about what the sequence looked like. I can think about a sequence algebraically. Well, algebraically, I could define a sequence by giving you a rule to compute the nth term. Maybe a sub n is some algebraic formula like n squared plus one. In that case, I can just compute the first term is one squared plus one, which is two. The second term is two squared plus one, which is five. The third term is three squared plus one, which is 10, and so on. Our goal now is to build some interesting sequences and explore the properties that those sequences have.